Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Coffee and a Kiki here on a Wiggy Weeby Wednesday with me, Bobby Z. Um, I have my caffeination ready. It's actually really late for me to be doing this. I didn't have time to do the video yesterday, which was Tuesday, so it's actually Wednesday. And I'm going to try to do this in one fell swoop and not edit it at all because I do not have time. So let's get started. Calf up and I'll get right back. Okay. So this week they did the Channeling Oprah Challenge and they had to interview Chaz Bono and Cher's mother, whose name I don't remember. Now, I thought that this was a really interesting challenge, but I kind of felt like Chaz and his mom, Chaz and Cher's mom were being kind of elusive in the challenge. Like I felt like they weren't really giving them enough to go with. I kind of felt like they were just going like, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like they they were kind of just giving them like low energy one word answers. And to me, that kind of, I think, kind of made some of the girls fall a little flat. Um, and in terms of the challenge, I thought Ben Dela Creme, I thought Ben Dela Creme was going to win the interview challenge. Um, but I know Courtney pulled that like crazy wing thing out on the runway and that's why she won. Um, but I thought Ben did the best of all of them in the interview. I thought she was really personable. And I loved how, like, her, Bianca, and Courtney all had, like, the stacked wig with the bump. Like, all of them had, you know, a wig on a bump. And I loved that. I thought that was really cool. And I loved how Ben kind of dressed himself like Cher. I really liked that. Um, Dela, I mean, sorry. I know that he doesn't like to be called Ben when he's in drag. Dela was channeling Cher. Um... I thought, you know, Trinity was, I thought she looked beautiful. I loved that wig. That wig was gorgeous on her. But I think she was kind of falling flat because she kind of didn't really know what kind of questions to ask. And um, I think that her calling her chat, calling Chaz Chad was a big factor in her going home. Um, on the other hand, um, I thought Adore didn't do great at all. Like I thought, you know, she was just kind of spazzing all over the place, but that's kind of what she does. She's never prepared and she kind of just goes up there and wings it. And then this time it really ended up turning the bud because she ended up being in the bottom two. However, I thought the bottom two should have been Adore and Jocelyn because I mean, Jocelyn was, you know, she had me there for like a split second. The awkward, like coming out of Cher and coming out of her thing was really awkward and I'm kind of upset that she went with that intro. And it's like, there could have been so many more funny ways to say it without saying vagina like she originally wanted to. Um, oh my God, I still have this ingrown hair. It's finally going away. I've had it for like two weeks. It's disgusting. Anyway, um, I just saw it on the screen. I'm like, that's gross. Um, and I just, I think that like her as a whole, Jocelyn like wasn't really doing it for me. I thought like she had some good, she had some good energy in the beginning, but then she asked that abortion question and that just was like, whoa, that's wow. And it's like, especially the way that she asked it, like she was just kind of like nonchalant, like, oh yeah, just a mishap at the abortion clinic and you decided not to do it. Like you, seriously, like that's, <laughs> that just to me was kind of like, whoa, what, why are you bringing that up? That's kind of not cool. Um, and I thought that Bianca did, I thought Bianca did really well in the challenge, but I think, and it's the same thing that Santino said, is that she's used to hosting on a mic with a crowd full of people that when she asks some questions, they don't answer, have to answer back. And I think that that was Bianca's downfall this week was that she didn't kind of allow enough air for them to answer. And then because she had focused so much on Chad or Chaz, whoa, I just did it. Woo! She focused too much on Chaz instead of focusing on um, Grandma Cher. I, I just, I'm going to call her because I don't remember her name. And I know a million of you guys are going to write her name down in the comments. And I'm sorry, I just don't know it off the top of my head right now. And I don't feel like looking it up because I don't want to edit this video any more than I have to. So, um... I think that was Bianca's biggest downfall was not allowing enough air. And I think that, um, I mean, personally, if I were Bianca, I would have asked Chaz a question. I would have asked her a question. I would have asked Chaz a question. I would have asked her a question. I would have asked Chaz a question. I would have asked her a question just so that it can go back and forth. And you're not, you're not going to run the risk of running out of time and not getting to the whole other guest on the challenge. Um, then I think for the runway, I loved Courtney's wings. I thought they were really cool. Um, I loved Bianca's look. I loved that dress and I loved like the painting on her and her face. And I loved that wig. It was like six wigs kind of stacked together down her back. It was so cool. Very, really spiky, cool texture. I really liked that. 
Um, I loved uh, Dela's bug thing. I thought that was really cool. It kind of reminded me of like the frogs, like the musical by Stephen Sondheim, the frogs. Kind of just reminded me of that. Um, but I thought it was cool, and I thought that like her makeup looked really good. I really thought that Darian's um, runway look was really pretty, but I thought compared to the other girls was a little too plain. Like I feel like she didn't go quite as far with the elephant thing and like her nipples were hard on her fake boobs which she probably just has like you know um the bird seed in a stocking and like the knots and everything that make the nipple that's probably what she had and just the way the dress was made it kind of just poked out she was a little cold um it was a little bit nipply in here so um i thought I thought that Darian looked really good in the interview challenge. I loved her hair and I loved her dress and I thought she looked really pretty in that pink and the blonde. Um, I did kind of feel bad for her because she was fumbling a lot and then her earring broke and I just, I like, it was just like not, it was just not Ben, it was not Ben, wow. It wasn't Darian's week this week with the challenge. Um, going back to runway, I hated Adore's look. Like she, like she looked like she shopped at Hot Topic and that mask, like I don't, I don't understand what the mask was for. And then she just had like a leopard cape thing that looked just like some leopard fabric sewn together with a hole in it for sleeves and a head. And I wasn't a big fan of that. And I think that Michelle Visage brought up a good point about that. Everything that Adore has been wearing has basically kind of been off the rack. And I totally do agree with that, but I can't really knock her because my biggest place to shop is Rainbow and, like, the plus-size section at Macy's. So I kind of buy off the rack as well, but I at least, like, alter it and fix it to make it not look so generic and store-bought. But I think, you know, she's still new with this, and she's still young. She's only been doing it a couple years, so it's kind of like she's still coming along in her drag. Um, I thought Trinity's look was the best on the runway. Like, I was so shocked when she was in bottom two, especially over Jocelyn. Like, that Jocelyn's look with the feather on her head and the feather on her bra and then, like, the reveal of, like, that cod piece. Like, it wasn't even, like they said, it wasn't even a tuck. It was, like, a cod piece. Like, she looked like she was, like, a nut of the round table with a cod piece on. I just was like, what, what are you wearing? Um, at least she didn't wear that same necklace that she's been wearing. Um... Everyone on Facebook's been talking about her wearing the same necklace every week, and I've just never noticed. So now I kind of want to go back and watch them and be like, oh, there it is, oh, there it is, oh, there it is, oh, there it is, because I never noticed. So now I kind of want to go back and see. And I kind of want to go back and watch the rest of the season now, again, now that I know, like, who's going home and what's going on, because when I've gone back and watched seasons again in the past, it's really, really evident from the beginning who is going to be in the top like it's always it's always that way it's like you know from the beginning especially once you go back and watch it you can see how they strategically sent people home and um someone put it on facebook about how courtney won because they didn't want any of the winner they didn't they wanted the final three to have like an even amount of winnings so they each were going to have two so ben already won bianca already won and courtney already won so i think personally bianca uh, ben should have won the challenge this week, but I understand because Courtney's outfit was so awesome with the like 15 foot wingspan. That was just so cool that that's why she won. And I understand that. Um, I do think that Courtney did kind of come out of her shell a little bit more this week with the interview and she kind of allowed her personality to shine through a little more than she has been. And like she said, there is a human in there and I really am starting, I'm starting to like her a little more. I've always liked her. I've always been a fan for years now. I have, you know, I have a wigs by vanity wig and everything. So, um, I just like, I'm excited to see that she's kind of coming more out of her shell and she's kind of being Courtney more. Um, same with Ben. Ben's kind of like, or Dela. Oh my God, I keep saying Ben. I think Dela is the same thing. She's kind of like coming out of her shell and she's allowing us to see who she really is. Um, in her uh, runway, I already talked about everybody. I believe um, I thought Trinity's look was amazing, like I said, and I think the bottom two should have been Jocelyn and Adore. Um, I mean, Jocelyn did have enough. I think the reason why Jocelyn stayed is a they kind of need a booger to stay around a little longer. Um, not that Jocelyn's a booger, but compared to the rest of them, she's just not as heightened. And they've said that multiple times. She's just not on the same level. And it's not that she's not cute. And it's not that she's not talented. It's just like. Her clothing is a little tasteless, and her jokes are a little tasteless, too. So it's kind of like she needs to step up her game in that aspect just a bit. Um, but I think it should have been those two. Um, but watching the lip sync, I don't know how, like, how Adore was safe. Like, I mean, 
Trinity was in it. Like, she was in it from the second that song started to the second that song ended. She was in it. She was giving body. She never let her energy drop once. And there's a point in the show, and there was a point if you go back and watch the runway, or if you go back and watch the lip sync, I mean, a door, like, walks to the center of the runway, and then she comes back around. And she literally dropped all her energy and just walked. And I'm like, you're dropping your energy and just walking with no emotion and nothing. You're just dropping your energy and just walking a couple feet on the runway. And that was when I was like, oh, Trinity has this in the bag. Trinity's going to stay. And I just, I, I think that like Trinity's a much better performer. And I think Trinity's better on the runway than Adore is. And, you know, but, you know, there's always going to be that one person that's going to stay and that's going to stay and it's going to stay even though they should have gone home a while ago. And in this season, that's Jocelyn and Adore. Um, I personally wouldn't have minded to have seen Jocelyn go home, and it's not that I don't like her. Like I said, it's just that she's just not on the other le the same level as these other girls are. And um, but I thought the lip sync was great. I thought that it, it was very close. But then once Adore dropped her energy, it just was kind. Of, and she was just kind of all over the place, and her arms weren't finished, and she was just kind of like throwing herself everywhere. And I loved that like they danced together, and I love that they were like rubbing on each other. And it wasn't like it wasn't a lip sync battle. It was like a team lip sync, and I really liked that because you can tell that like they all love Trinity and they all really like her. And especially because now that she's stepping out of her box, they all are like rooting for her. And then she did such a great job. I was really sad to see her go. And I think that uh, I think that Trinity could have brought a little more to the competition that we're not going to see now. Um, but you know, like Trinity was so happy at the end, even though I, you could tell she was upset that she was going home, but she was so happy and positive and she was like, she was just thanking everybody. And I just, I really, I really like her now. And I'm just sad to see her go now, especially against a door. And I just, I, I just was not impressed with the door and I have not really been impressed with the door since day one. I did love her Anna Nicole Smith, but like I said, she's kind of just being herself as Anna Nicole, just like, Jermaine! just, you know, kind of going with it, being herself just a little more drunk than usual. Um, that was my biggest thing was just, I think that Trinity should have been safe and it should have been Jocelyn and Adore. And there's also this big thing going on Facebook now about the, you've got she -mail and all of that. And I do agree that I think that it was a good idea for them to remove it, but it's kind of like, why did it take so long for it to become an issue? But the reason why is because they did the female she -mail challenge in that episode where you had to guess if it was a, a guy or a drag, if it was a drag queen or a real woman. And I think that that could have been a little more tasteful. Um, and I think it could have been done a slightly different way with the same idea and had it not been offensive. But, um, you know, the You've Got she has been going on for, we're on season six, and it's been going on this whole time. And no one's ever had an issue with it because it's a play on email, not, you know, she -mail. And I think that um, people just got a little too sensitive with it on this topic. But, you know, I'm not transgendered and I'm not, I'm a gay man that does drag. So I... I'm not offended by it personally, but I can see how other people can be. So I'm not, you know, going to raise hell about how it's gone and everything. A lot of my Facebook Facebook friends were going in about it's not it's not offensive and everyone's too sensitive. And it's like, no, I think people need to be sensitive and I think people need to be sensitive to other people's issues and what offends other people. Um, but at the same time, I do agree that it's like six seasons in now we're getting rid of it. But like I said, it is because of the female female game. Um, I am excited to see next week for, you know, the bride and groom challenge. I think that's going to, that's going to be really, really neat. I'm excited to watch that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm already over 10 minutes. I'm probably closer to 12 now and I'm not going to edit this at all because I just need to post it. So thank you guys again for watching. Be sure to tune in on Friday for another fun Friday video. I think this week's going to be frustration Friday. I had a great idea for a frustration Friday and then it kind of went 360 and it changed. So now I'm like, oh, well, what am I going to talk about on frustration Friday? I'm sure I'll think of something. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out all my fun social media stuff down in the box on every website except for Facebook. I'm wigging out BZ on Facebook. I'm Bobby Pins. Also be sure to check out bobbypins.com. Uh, I just got a shipment of wigs in today. I'm going to be posting them maybe tonight or tomorrow. So I do have some new stock coming in. I'm going to be ordering some more CPO wigs as well. Yeah. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys on Friday for another fun Friday video. Thanks.